Good morning, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm Pastor Dan Sheets of Zion Lutheran in Maywood, New Jersey. Just wanting to bless you and your family with the word of some prayer and some words from Scripture on this day of Thanksgiving. Um, I hope that you're with a loved one at this time, this day, and going to enjoy the day that the Lord has made. I have a little day of Thanksgiving, uh, propers of the day service for you. So grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This day we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our introit of the day. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Let us pray. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the day of Thanksgiving is written in Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know the Lord, that he might make you know that man also shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these forty years. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle this day is written in Philippians, the fourth chapter. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, 
but now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Alleluia. The reading of the Holy Gospel this day from St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Well, it is a day of thanksgiving, and we know and we trust that our faith does make us well. Here we are, the national holiday in our land, and it actually does make most people settle down, meditate on the things that are good, be thankful, thanking God for all the provisions he richly and daily provides us. I know as well as you do, the times we are living in can be depressing. The state of the world is not good. And this is why we not only need to meditate on being thankful this day, but we also need the peace of God. Paul, in his wisdom through the Holy Spirit, tells us to think on true things, noble and just things, whatever is pure, lovely, of good report, if there is any virtue or anything praiseworthy. Now, that basically is telling us not to go to the newspapers, television, or media, because in those avenues right now, none of those meditative things exist. There is only one place where they do, though, and that is the word of the Lord. As long as we live, only his works are made manifold, as was read in the introit for the day. When he sends forth his spirit, they are created. And his mercy is for all the eyes who look to him. Satisfaction comes from him alone. Paul goes on to tell us in Philippians that suffering is a part of this temporal life. And there are people who do hunger this day. They need, though, fed, first and foremost, the gospel. The gospel, which gives us strength to do all things. So what does Jesus have to say about thanksgiving? The ten lepers cleansed in Luke tell us he asked, were not ten cleansed when only the Samaritan came back to give him thanks? 
And at the end, he states that giving glory to God is tied to your faith, which makes you well. Now, he is not criticizing the other nine, for they were following the law to go and get declared clean. Who knows? Maybe the other nine came back later. Luke does not tell us that. But it's more about the priority of the order. Acknowledge who is the true priest, who can declare you clean, whiter than snow, rather than trust in men and leaders of the law. Our faith clings to the law of love, which is none other than Jesus seeing us. He responds to our cry for mercy by seeing us. And you know how I told you that we want to see things before? It's so much like doubting Thomas. We have to be able to see things in order to believe them. And we want to have those tangible things in our lives. But as you have been listening and heard all these readings for Thanksgiving Day, some people call them lessons, they point us to how tangible the love of God and Christ Jesus is. Now, lepers are often practically blind because they have swelling from the leprosy around their eyes. Jesus' mercy heals the swollenness so we can see, but first he sees us. First he comes to us, down from glory into humanity to walk among us. Christ travels our wilderness. Christ is the noble things, the just, the lovely one, pure, having the gospel of good report. He is the good news. And by virtue of his dying on the cross and the praiseworthiness of defeating sin, death, and the power of the devil upon us, his rising from the dead, he does share in our distress in order to supply all our needs. Not just the tangible, but the spiritual as well. And he has risen. He speaks to us this day of thanksgiving and gives us his absolution in the arise, go your way. For the Christian, our way is the way, the truth and the life. Faith making us well returns to God. So, on this day when you have eaten your full, show yourself blessed. Lift out your hands to his open hands. Touch the nail-scarred hands by loving your neighbor. If you have seen them, then you have seen him. For our necessities have no regard for the year that it is on the calendar, not even the month or the day, but are carried out by the fruit that abounds to your account. To your account. Christ, filling your account with a balance faith never can consume enough of. Until thanksgiving is consummated. When we shall eat of the tree of life once more in the garden of life. Falling down at his feet, giving thanks. To God and our Father be glory forever and ever. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, folks, I hope you've been blessed this day by the words that the Lord has given me, by the blessings of the Holy Spirit this day in, the, in whatever place you are, whatever state, whatever country you're coming in at. This day of Thanksgiving is just not a one-time thing, but it is a glory that is bestowed upon us day in and day out as we love our fellow neighbor as ourselves. I pray for the homeless, for the lost, the persecuted, for those in need, for those who need physical, tangible things this day, but more so that they receive the gospel of Christ that fills their soul unto life everlasting. And you as well, depart in that peace. Be blessed. Amen.